Hey guys, welcome to this new video. Today I want to, to make a video a little bit different from the previous video. And I want to talk to you about the last trip I made in Hagiang. So Hagiang is in the north of Vietnam. Uh, it's very next to um, China. And actually over there, um, the best thing you could do is to rent motorbike and then you can travel for a few days. So this is what I did with a friend. We've been there for about uh, four or five days. The best thing you should do is that you shouldn't rent a motorbike directly in Hanoi, but uh, take a sleeping bus from Hanoi to Hagiang. And from that city, you can easily find rental shops. And from there, you can start your journey. Um, so usually we did um, this loop. So it depends um, of what you are looking for, but we wanted to go really in the countryside, really like deep in the culture, um, because over there you have some minorities different kind and especially like Hmong uh, ma minorities and that's why we took this path to be sure we'll go through some villages and actually it was pretty nice the best thing you should do as well is stay in homestay so um, because right now this is the perfect season to travel it's not so cold uh, it's not so rainy uh, and at the same time you have some flowers there so um, many many vietnamese are traveling during that period that is about end of october beginning of november so this is one of the best season to travel and to do this hagiang loop so um during yeah, usually four or five days you can travel around some people will take um, seven days some people can even take 10 days if they want to do some extension during the trip but because i went with a friend who had only few days uh, of traveling um, then we, we only spent four or five days. But it was still a very, very nice journey, uh, as you can see. Um, very, very rural, um, very different even from Sapa. I used to travel Sapa a few times, and actually, when I went uh, to this loop, um, it's very different from Sapa. I feel that you are very more close to um, the people living there. Um, you can really see the way they are living you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, some of them, some of the farmers, they don't have a buffalo to help them. Um, some old women are carrying um, things on their back, kind of climbing mountains. Um, I guess they have a pretty, pretty tough life over there. But um, still, I guess it's an interesting perspective from foreigner and from expatriates to go to this region. So they can be also, again, uh, more connected to how the mi minorities are living in Vietnam. So coming back to the accommodation, uh, I was telling you the best thing is to go to homestay. Uh, you will have plenty in each of the cities you can pass by uh, of homestay, of uh, basically uh, people who are renting dorms or who are renting small rooms in their houses. And from there, usually you can spend time with them during the night. They will cook a big meal. Um, you have also a lot of travelers. Uh, so it's very nice because you have many people that are traveling by groups. Um, we saw some uh, groups of five, six uh, girls from about 25 years old traveling together. Even people from Saigon going there and traveling by groups. And when you gather um, during the night, uh, you have a very, very nice atmosphere. Everyone is very friendly and everyone is sharing about their own experience of this journey. Um, so it's really a, a trip I do recommend to people who are into connecting to, um, to the nature, connecting to um, those very, very traditional way of living and having something very different from what you find in big cities. Um, when you compare the way the local are living there to even places, um, small cities like Wuntao, even Dalat, you know, um, those cities are very well developed, but when you go to the mountain over there, uh, it's really like you come back in, in the old time. You have people that are really using all machinery. You see some people that are cleaning their clothes from the water that is going uh, on the mountain. So um, it's, it's very uh, a special experience uh, to go there. It's kind of mind-blowing to see that even in Vietnam be, is still very emerging. But in some regions, some people are living with this very like whole habit and uh, old way of, of working. You will be also amazed to see a lot of kids uh, that are basically a little bit lost in the mountain. You see a group of kids walking. Um, actually, we saw uh, many schools over there. 
and I'm pretty sure the, the Vietnam um, government is putting a lot of effort to try to be sure uh, those minorities will keep uh, learning and will keep kind of follow the trend and the growth of the country. But obviously, we still see sometimes some kids that are after work um, helping the, the parents, helping the grandparents, uh, doing farming, carrying heavy stuff across the mountain. So um, again, yeah, it's pretty, um, uh, a, 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 I would say, a special experience to see that from a foreigner perspective. And again, just to talk about the beauty, you have those huge mountains. The landscape is very diverse. You have big forest and you have a um, waterfall. Uh, you can ha take path uh, during the mountain. Um, you can basically do hiking. And just uh, if you are not um, that into uh, sport, you can still rent a bike and uh, just going across the mountain and around the pass, um, your, your journey will be very, very nice. Uh, we were quite lucky because we had uh, almost four days of um, um, cloudy and sunny, so we could see the mountain from different perspectives. Um, Sometimes it was very sunny, so we could see the mountain very far. And in a few days it was also cloudy and a little bit rainy. Uh, so you, we could also see um, this beauty from like big cloud over the mountain. So it gives us a very nice and interesting perspective. Talking about the food, uh, the local in the north won't cook the same uh, dishes as, as we find in the south. I was surprised when I saw uh, the menu, um, but basically it's, it's quite cheap uh, going there. Usually the local, they're going to cook for you the same way they cook for themselves. So uh, it's nice to, um, to be there. And again, uh, it's really, from my perspective, a good experience to be as well living with them during the night. Um, even if you are, if you want something a little bit nice, a nice hotel, you can find maybe upper guest house uh, with nice room, with your own shower inside the room. Uh, with my friend, we really decided to take this trip as a little bit a backpacking trip, uh, having only one bag, going around and just going with the flow. And when we see um, a nice guest house, we would stop and spend the night. Um, so it was our way of uh, doing this trip. But I'm pretty sure according to your own taste, according to the way you like to travel, you can find a, a good mix between being connected with the local and this nature, this beauty. And at the same time, uh, when you go home to the hotel, you have something that is uh, quite nice and that you can relax and spend a good night. In the period we went, you really don't need to have AC in the room. Um, there were not so many mosquitoes as well. So uh, you would really sleep very well. You just need to have a big blanket um, because the night was pretty cold and then usually you would spend uh, quite a, a good and, and relaxing night. And just because you're going to travel uh, from five to six hours and even seven hours sometime per day with your motorbike, if you, if you take time also to take some picture and go around, uh, then obviously when you go home, you're pretty exhausted and you just want to rest and relax. To give you an idea about the cost, you can find different kind of motorbike. Uh, we chose to take um, 110 cc Honda, so it was a semi-automatic motorbike. Uh, we chose this bike because we wanted to be sure in case we have a problem with the bike, we could easily find a mechanic guy that could fix it. Um, but if you want to have a bigger bike, you can also rent uh, Yamaha uh, 125 cc or even bigger bikes. Uh, if you are someone who like to go off-road, you have quite a lot of rental shops in uh, Hagyang. Uh, there is few that are recommending in different blogs uh, online. So I guess you, you can easily find a reliable rental shop. Most of the shop, we invite you to take uh, the insurance. And I think if you are a beginner, you should maybe take that insurance at least for the bike uh, because you may uh, face sometimes some tricky part during uh, your trip. So if you have the insurance for the bike, at least even if you crash um, a few times your bike during the trip, uh, you won't feel you're, you know, really so overwhelming and you will be pretty uh, okay when you will give back the bike to the guy. So about the cost, you can expect paying $5 per day uh, for semi-automatic bikes. I guess the bigger bike uh, would be a rent for maybe uh, $10 or $15 per day. So from your budget, you can find a bike that is suitable for you. And the insurance will be usually between $2.5 to maybe $5 per day uh, that you have to add as an extra uh, in the rental costs.
Then about the food, uh, everything is pretty cheap. You can eat for two dollar, three dollar, four dollar if you are in very very small and rural mm. areas. And then I guess uh, you can find a little bit nicer restaurant uh, if you want to have a better experience. And about the dorm and the accommodation, um, I think we pay, it was m less than $5 per day, uh, per night, per person. Um, I guess you can find other alternative that goes, yeah, maybe $10, I think we, we took for a private room. So I guess you have a lot of options with a very affordable price. Then the bus ticket to go directly to Hagiang cost us about 200 Vietnam Dong. So it's about a little bit less than $10. I would say you can spend over there uh, a week and I'm pretty sure for someone who is already living in Vietnam or for a tourist that is looking for a special experience really different from the traditional path the tourists are taking, um, doing the Hag Yang Loop uh, with your own motorbike and really staying in guest houses can bring you um, a very nice and interesting experience. And it's something I do really recommend uh, to anyone coming to Vietnam. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this quick talk and explanation about this trip would give you a better um, picture about what you can find over there. And I hope the different pictures and video I show you through this uh, discussion was nice to watch. Thanks again, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye bye.